Chapter 22, Quademoc One in Yekavu called for Jom and Obey to come to his tent, discussing the situation thoroughly. What can you guys tell me about a city called Quademoc? One in Yekavu asked. Jom shaking his head. Not much other than I heard of it. Obey agreed by saying. Same here, but I heard of a lot of activities down that way as well, but never been there. One in Yekavu stood there looking at the city's map. Check around the entire camp and see what people know of this place, and get with me in the morning, during Umkumbi, with the rest of the warriors. Jom and Obey said, We'll do. One in Yekavu stood there looking at a map, trying to figure out why his people were there, of all places. Early during Umkumbi, his nine top council, Raphael's son, Jamie, and an additional eight warriors, Maliha, Abba, Avani, Shana, Tiago, Hannah, Kenji, and Nenothat, whom Jom found out that they had been there at least once. They all sat down to see what they could find out about the city of Quatemoc. Shana said, As a prostitute, myself, Avani Abba, and Malia were sent there from time to time to satisfy the men there. But as far as what goes on in those parts, we do not know. The men never spoke to any of us about their work there. Actually, they never asked us anything. They usually just gave us commands. Nervously and afraid, Avani walked forward and fell to her knees, crying. I have been selling my body since I was twelve years old, and I... So overwhelmed she could not speak. Wanyan Yekavu stood up and approached her, hugged her, took her hands and looked her in the eyes. My dear sweet sister, know this, Sabbath is not ashamed of what you were, either should you, for it was not your own free will, but they forced it upon you. He is proud of who you are now. Remember this, the evil one prevents us from moving forward in our lives because of our past. You are the most precious thing in Sabaoth's eyesight, a woman, a deliverer of life. Without women, there cannot be men. Go and live your life without shame and teach others, who have been through the same thing, that they too can live a life with Sabaoth. If you desire to be married, tell that man your past, what Sabaoth rescued you from. If he accepts it, marry that man. If he cannot, dust the dust from your shoes and continue for, he too still has problems of his own. He who loves Sabaoth will forgive you as Sabaoth forgave him. Give that man your all, and you'll never be ashamed again. For even Sabaoth says there is no large sin, no small sin. Sin is sin. Wanyan Yekavu hugged all the women as they all began to cry and walked out of the tent. Returning to his seat, Everyone in the tent was crying. One in Yekavu, wiping tears from his eyes. Okay, okay, stop it. You four. Trying to keep his composure. Is there anything you can tell us about this city? Tiago, Hannah, Kenji, and Nuno stood there for a moment, and Nuno came forward. All of us except for Kenji work in the incinerator. I worked in another city, just south of there for two years. One day a friend of mine named Celso accidentally got stuck by some kind of needle. When it was told to the supervisor, he was never seen again. I asked about his whereabouts and was sent here the same day. One in Yekava asked. What was it you were putting in the incinerator? Nuna looked back at the men. Guesting, cause I never really seen the inside of the bags. Biohazard waste and dead bodies. One in Yekavu started thinking for a bit, then told the men. You three may go. Then he said, And you, Kenji? Kenji approached the council. For years, me and my family worked as slaves, my grandparents, my parents, and even my brothers and sisters. I'm the youngest of them all, and I'm the only one living today. At nine years old, when I started. I'm thirty years old, as of yesterday, everyone said. Happy belated birthday. Holding back the tears, Kenji continued. Thank you, as a youth, I learned not to ask questions, especially anything about what the Abenians were or was doing. He held his head down and rubbed his fingers across his eyes as he raised his head. Kenji then said in anguish, They murdered my entire family right in front of me because my grandfather refused to work anymore. It wasn't until they sent me here three years ago that I started to map out a plan on how I was going to kill Abani B6. But that day you killed him, it... Whatever it was, I had said to myself, I would never leave your side. Raphael's son, Jamie, shouted. 
What? Abony B6 is dead. He stood there in shock for a moment. Abony B6 is who we were waiting for. He's the one over the operations in Laguna de Bustillos. A vicious and cold-hearted Abenian that I have ever seen. And you mean to tell me you killed him? Wanyan Yekavu pointed at his counsel. We killed it. Jamie got on his knees. I am forever in your debt, for I am sure me and my family would have been dead today if you hadn't killed him. Wanyan Yekava said. It. Jamie scratched his head, and Wanyan Yekava said. You will learn what it is in due time. Wanyan Yekava stood up, approached Kenji and Jamie, and hugged them, saying. And that's exactly what you two shall be, but even more, you shall be a friend and a dear friend at that. For you will be with me without being with me, my double O seven, my equalizers if you will. 